and welcome to today's final Redback webinar for 2013, how to get the most from your iPhone and iPad. My name is Sarah Gonzalez and I'll be your facilitator for today's webinar. So today's webinar is actually hosted by Bernadette Schwert and Nicole McClelland. How are you both today? We're very Good, thank well, you. thank you. All right, I'll leave it to you both to get started. Thanks, Sarah. How are you going? I'm good. How are you? I'm excellent too, and thanks for having us today. And thank yeah, you to everyone welcome. here on the call for enrolling and taking the time out of your busy schedule to be with us. And we've had a fantastic response to this webinar, and clearly there's a lot of iPhone and iPad users out there who need help, and uh, I'm included in that cohort. Now, one of the main reasons I thought this webinar would be of value is because I know personally how much time I waste, just tap, tap, tapping away, hoping that I'll get the function that I'm looking for. And I know if I just keep tapping, it'll eventually pop up, but a lot of it really is hit and miss. And, and it struck me more than once that as I was typing away, you know, what a, what a waste of time these keystrokes are. And I always think there's got to be a better way to do this. And, and I know there is, and it's lurking in the depths of an Apple iPhone manual. Um, but uh, to be quite honest, I would, uh, I would rather uh, poke my in uh, the eye with a hot stick than wade through <laughs> one of those manuals, but no matter how slick and glossy they are. But so I just plot on and I hope for a different result and without actually changing anything, which I know is the definition of insanity. And if it's not that, it's definitely the recipe for wasting a lot of time. So if you're like me and you use your phone a lot, um, this investment of one hour could possibly be the best investment you'll make all year because you're going to learn some tips that will dramatically increase your productivity and help you get the most out of these incredibly important devices. So let me tell you a little bit about Nicole. Now, Nicole is the founder of MS Planet Computer computer training. She's a Microsoft Certified Master Instructor and holds a Certificate 4 in Workplace Assessment and Training. She's the head trainer at MS Planet and she's trained clients such as Museum Victoria, Asa Adloy, Tip Top Bakeries and Hitachi Construction Machinery amongst many others. So welcome Nicole, it's great to have you on the call today. Let's get started. Thank you. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Um, so as Bernadette mentioned at the start, we're going to go through obviously a variety of things today where we're going to have a look at getting the most out of your iPhone. So just if I bring up our first slide here, I've got a summary of the different things that we're going to go through. So the first one there you can see is we're going to go through the new features with iOS 7, uh, looking at organising your apps on your iPhone just so you can find them a lot better and utilising the folder structure as well just to make that a bit easier. We're going to have a look at multitasking, a spotlight search, which again is another way to find things on your iPhone, and also the feature of the notification center. And that actually leads me into our first poll that we're going to ask everybody to participate in, if you wouldn't mind, um, in regards to iOS 7. So, Sarah, I might get you to kick off the poll if I could. I think Sarah might be attending. To, oh, no, there it is. Fantastic. There it is. Coming Lovely. Up. So um, the question we've got here is, have you upgraded to iOS 7? Because we've heard a bit of rumours about it. Um, some people don't like it. Uh, so they're trying to avoid upgrading, which I know, Bernadette, you and I spoke about the other day. Yes. Um, yeah, so we just want to get an idea on what people have done in regards to the iOS 7 update that was recently released. So obviously some of the results are starting to come in here, which is interesting. I've... All right, that looks really good. Now, interestingly enough, a lot of people have actually said that they, they do like it, but then, uh, so we've got 52% who said they like it, and then there's 32% who say, yes, they have upgraded, but they don't like it, which is also interesting. And I think that's where they're going to find it most helpful when we start to go through the new features with iOS 7. So we'll probably finish off the poll there, I think, um, Sarah, if that's okay. Lovely. All right. So as I said, I'm going to get into the, the very first slide in our presentation where we're going to go through all the new features with uh, iOS 7. Um, hopefully a lot of you do actually have your iPhones or iPads sitting there with you. So please feel free to go through these with me um, or obviously just watch it on the screen. So the first one I want to go through is accessing the control center. Now... I'm just having trouble with my first slide. It's not wanting to play the game. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, so the control center. 
Um, this is a new feature that they added in iOS 7, which I must admit I use a lot of the time. And I'm going to go to a screen just to indicate this one the best. Now, this is just a typical snapshot of an iPhone screen. To get into the control center, you actually swipe up from the very bottom of your screen and you just slide it up there. And what will happen is you'll get this area pop up on your screen called the control center. And it takes up the majority of the screen, as you can see here. So if you have a look at what I'm seeing here, there's quite a Nicole, few icons. Can yeah. I just take you back a second? The screen yeah, sure. just took a second to load. Can no you just problem. show us how we get this up? Just yep. if you can just talk us through, because the slide wasn't absolutely. on the screen. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so hopefully it's on the screen again for you. Yep. So I apologise for the delay. That's right. Um, so basically, you you move your finger down the very bottom of the screen, and you swipe up. So you just swipe up the top of the screen and it will bring up this panel here. All right. Cool. That's now, very clear. That's good. Now, in the, uh, the panel, you can see there's a number of different icons, which I'll go through with you just to give you a bit of an idea. Um, the first one in the top left-hand corner, just the little airplane symbol there. If anyone's ever travelled um, and you know they always tell you on the, the flights you've got to put your, um, your phone off, and they always mention to you to put it into airplane mode before you do so. Now, normally in the previous versions, you had to go into the settings, et cetera, to get into that. But now with iOS 7, you can just swipe up into your control center and you can just simply press on that icon in the top left-hand corner and it's really easy to do. Next to that, you've got um, an icon there for Wi-Fi. So if you ever need to turn your Wi-Fi on or off, you can do that from there also. And the same for the little icon in the middle there, which is the Bluetooth symbol. Next to that, you've got the little moon, and that will just access Do Not Disturb, which I'll actually talk about a little bit later on. And the last icon at the top there is the turning off rotation, which can be helpful depending on what you're actually looking at on the screen. Under that, you can change your brightness, which is also a great thing, because sometimes depending on where you are, you might need to make it brighter or obviously dim it down a little bit. If you're playing a song, you can go back to that and obviously access those features, move forward, play, change the volume underneath that. There's also another area at the bottom there for the uh, control center, which I don't know if anyone's ever come across yet. It's called AirDrop. And I am actually going to talk about that in a little bit. It's another new feature of iOS 7, so I'll definitely come back to that. But just to cap off the control center with the icons right down the bottom, the last four there, there's the torch. Uh, the next one across is the, um, the clock. So if you need to access the clock at any stage, quickly getting into the calculator, which I often use, so I don't have to find it in the apps anymore, and the camera obviously as well. So there's some really useful features there um, that can just give you that quick access, whereas in the past you had to sort of delve through um, your settings, etc., to find them. So hopefully everybody finds that useful. Um, I know I certainly use the control center quite a bit, but that, as I said, is one of the new features in iOS 7. Um, Nicole, just while we're changing slides, a few people yeah, are sure. suggesting they don't see AirDrop or AirPlay. Is there any reason okay. why they may not? Yeah, that's a really good point. And as I said, I'm going to talk about that in a little bit, but I'll mention it right now. Um, you'll only see AirPlay and AirDrop if you actually have an iCloud account. So if you don't have your own iCloud account set up, then you won't obviously have those two features sitting in there. Um, so okay. hopefully Is that something that will we wait. should talk about later, about iCloud? Is that something you yeah, we'll talk about later? Yeah, definitely. We okay. don't, I don't actually talk about it too much in this session, um, but definitely something that we can discuss you know, further on into the, um, the webinar later on. That's okay. fine. Good. Yep. Thanks, Carly, and Kim, for your, your questions. And just while we're here, Nick, um, another person yeah, asked sure. that the old iPhone 3 doesn't take, uh, I, I presume it doesn't take iOS 7. Can you just talk a bit about if you've got an old phone, it may not take the upgrade? Yeah. It's a bit like a computer, unfortunately. Um, sometimes the older machines, um, and in this case, the older iPhones won't take the latest software. And it's just, I guess it's just Apple's way of trying to promote that you go out and, and upgrade and get a new phone um, and you don't just stick with your old one. So unfortunately, yeah, you do get blocked. Um, I know the 3GS um, does allow, or 3G I should say, um, that does allow iOS 7, but um, obviously the earlier models don't. So yeah, that's something that you'll have to consider whether or not you want to upgrade to a later model. 
Cool. Thank you. All right. Okay. So the next um, point that I was going to go through is the calendar view. Um, in iOS 7, it actually looks quite different. Um, so I'm just going to again bring up some screen dumps of that one just to show you. So in the past with iOS 6 and prior, you used to obviously see your appointments and you obviously had a one day at a time view. And at the top, you tended to just see just that one day. But in iOS 7, when you're looking at a day view, you actually see the other days of the week, uh, which is quite helpful. So if I wanted to jump in this image to the 29th, I could just tap on that up the top and it would take me straight to that particular date. Um, so that's quite the, useful. The, the, the slide hasn't yet loaded. Okay, so, that's fine. Um, we I'll might give it a get couple of seconds to get, get you to talk up. through it again. Yeah, um, that's fine. Let me and know while, you can while that is loading, um, hmm. It is the calendar, it seems, that a lot of people are struggling with. Like my husband, for example, said to me, you know, you've really got to uh, upgrade. And, and I said, well, judging by your comments that you hate your phone right now, <laughs> I don't think I'm very inspired to do that because he really struggles with the calendar. Um, yeah, yes, so uh, mm. now uh, this uh, slide's yet to come up. So maybe you can okay. just uh, talk us through or maybe say you could help us on the back end as to why that slide may not be moving. Or maybe it's just me. Is anyone else not getting that slide? Have to wait and see. Yeah. yeah. No, people can't. See people other people can't, can't see it. Okay. Well, let, let's talk. You, let's <laughs> talk through it. Thanks for your feedback, okay. everybody. Yeah, that's great. Um, so basically, if you've got your iPhone in front of you and you have upgraded, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. But when you go into the calendar, um, the default view is just to show you a day at a time. It just remembers what your most recent view is. Um, and that's great. That's very similar to what was in the past. Um, but what happens now is at the very top there, it actually gives you a string of dates and it just tends to show you a week at a time. So it'll go from Sunday to Sunday and you can then just tap on the day that you want to go to. So if I'm looking at today's date and I want to go ahead to Friday's date, I can just simply tap on the number for Friday and it will take me straight to that date. It's obviously a little bit hard to describe um, when you can't visualise it in front of you, but hopefully that makes mm. sense. Um, I'll just maybe get Sarah on the line. Sarah, yeah, is there any, sure. uh, any thoughts about what we can do about getting the slides to load? Uh, which slide are you after? We're after the calendar. It's just after the uh, the control centre, maybe slide eight. Yeah, no, yeah. it's actually a bit further down, Sarah, because I've got hyperlinks linking forward to it. Okay. okay. So slide number eight is organising apps. So yeah, yeah, no, it's not that one. Is it further on from there, Nick? Yeah, it is. Yeah, I've got okay. hyperlinks. Sarah, if you could just um, if you could just keep flicking through, we seem to have a little bit of a delay with the loading. If you just click on the arrows up the top, that'll bring up each animation. Okay. Yep. Um, yep, okay. <laughs> That's probably going to take a little bit longer, unfortunately, because um, I've got to get through to the... Sorry, everybody. Um, That's okay. I've got to get down to the slide. So I actually need to get to slide 21. Okay, so, so you that... click on that slide in the thumbnail option. And then... Okay, beautiful. Is that coming up for everybody, hopefully? Can you see that, Bernadette? Mm, not, not yet. Not yet. Okay, we've got that delay, obviously. I'll double click on it again just to see if it'll pop up. Are you seeing that now? Not yet. No. Is anybody else? If anyone else wouldn't mind giving me a comment whether you can see it, there's just a screen dump there of an actual calendar. No change. No. no still can't see. Okay. We're Here, we come. Here we come. Here we come. There now we're in 2013 November. Okay. Is that right? Yep. Yay! Yeah. Kind of, we love technology. Ahead, but that's okay. <laughs> okay. So start oh, again. Nick, look, what's going on that's here? That's okay. Yeah, look, it's actually moved ahead on this particular slide. But again, it's just showing you up the top there. Um, at the moment, it's looking at a month view in the calendar. Uh, so you can actually see a snapshot, obviously, of the month and all the little dots indicate that you've got an appointment on those particular days. And you can then just tap on a date that you want to get to just to bring that up in the day view. Um, the other thing that's new, which is where the little pointing finger up the top there is just looking at, is a link back to the, the year. So if I actually go to that one, hopefully it'll let me move on to it. I have a feeling. Let's see how we go. There we go. You can see, hopefully now, that it's actually yes, going through into the month. So what I might do is I'll go back to the um, the day view. 
So yeah, that's and go back to the week view as well, Nick, if you can, because yeah, someone's been sure. asking me about how do I get the week view. Yep, of course. So what I've got on the screen at the moment is actually, it's the day view, but it's showing you the week at the very top where you can see the numbers 24, 25, 26, 27, etc. Um, the only way you can actually get a week view in the iPhone or the iPad is actually to rotate your phone around into a landscape position and that will actually automatically go to the week view. Um, so if you're looking at it in the portrait mode, it will always just show you a day at a time. But if you just manually just move your um, iPhone around to a landscape position, it'll go to the week view. All right. Great. Um, yeah, it's probably worth really its good. weight in gold, Nicole. Just that one comment. <laughs> it's probably Absolutely. worth its weight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and once you realise that it can do that, it does make it a lot easier because obviously sometimes you want to get a bit of a snapshot of what's coming up for the following days, you know, when you're trying to schedule something in. So it's definitely a good idea. Yeah, so just, and, and David's just, made a good comment here, Nick, that the iPad yeah. shows the week view in portrait view. Yes, because it's got the wider screen. So, yeah, great. Okay, feedback, thanks, David. David. You're right. Yeah, because it is the bigger screen, um, it's obviously got more um, real estate, I guess, to show that information. Yeah. But the iPhone being a lot smaller, you tend to have to put it on the landscape um, angle and then you'll see all that information there. Excellent. Yeah, so that it does take a little bit to get used to. I, I tend to just mainly use the, the first um, view, which I popped up before, this one here, which just shows you a day and then the week structure at the top. And I do rotate it around to landscape to get the um, the week view. I Every now and again, I'll go into the month view if I need to see something um, and look forward a little bit. But I very rarely go to the last one, which I'm showing on the overhead now, um, on the screen now, where it actually gives you a snapshot of the whole year. Um, but it is an option, so you can just simply go and move around from there. Great. Thank you. All right. Okay. So I'm going to move back um, to that first slide where we're on up the top here, and I'll just move back through that again. So the next um, iOS 7 uh, new feature is the camera. Now, obviously, the camera itself is not new, but there's some nice additions to it, um, which tend to make your life a little bit easier. So I'm just bringing it up on the screen now. So hopefully everybody can see that and we're not getting that delay. Um, the first thing with the camera, which is really handy, is you can take a photo straight from the lock screen. Uh, so we if you're not the slide yet, the screen Nick. there, that's okay. <laughs> Whatever you did last time, can you do that again? Yeah, I'm madly trying to do it again. <laughs> I'm double clicking as Sarah suggested. So is it coming up now for anybody? Not yet. Not no? yet. Okay. All right, let's see what we can do here. There we go. Right. Beautiful. Is that coming up? All right. Yeah, lovely. lovely. I'm just going to go back a screen. Is that showing up for everybody, hopefully? Yeah, we've got the 552. Again. Fantastic. So this screen that I'm showing you now is just simply showing you the lock screen. And often, if you want to take a photo, it's something that's happening straight away. And you don't tend to have the time to unlock your phone, get into the camera app, and obviously shoot the photo. You want to be able to do it straight away. So the good thing with iOS 7 is in the lock screen, if you have a look in that bottom right-hand corner, there's the little camera icon just sitting there. And you can just tap on that and it'll take you straight into your camera and you can obviously just take the photo without having to unlock first. So I find that really helpful um, for when I want to take a, a quick photo. So that's one of the new, new changes. Um, the other one that I'm just bringing up on the screen now is if you're actually trying to take a photo of something. Uh, I don't know if anyone in the past has ever taken video on their iPhone, um, but if you have a look right down the bottom, just above the big circle button, um, there's a little option there for photo. And I'm not sure if you can see it from the screen dump there, but video is an option on the left-hand side. And pano is listed, which is the panorama view that you can use with your camera, which is... Um, kind of nifty, uh, it just allows you to take a really long shot, a nice landscape shot. Um, so there's a few changes down the bottom there. The other one where the little pointing finger is um, pointing to there are different filters that are available now. Um, so before I even take the photo, I can actually click on those three overlapping circles in the bottom right hand corner. And it will bring up this screen here for you. Uh, where you can actually see different ways that you can filter the shot. So you might want to take it in black and white or you might want to have a fade effect, all those sorts of quirky things that you can actually do at the point of taking the photo. 
Um, so some people might like to do that when they're doing it. You can actually also access these features after you've taken the photo. So don't worry if you took it and you think, oh, I wish I had have done that in black and white. You can still go back and, and apply that. Great. So there's some new features here, which are really good in um, in the camera. So again, just coming back up the top of the uh, the presentation, the next new feature after the camera is blocking callers. <laughs> which and Nick, before be, we move on, yeah, um, sure, if sorry. people don't see the panorama or circles yes. on their uh, screen, is there any reason yep. for that? The only thing I can think of is if they've not upgraded to iOS 7. Okay, so Andrea, Jonathan, and Kim, maybe that maybe let us know if that's your situation. Not yeah. sure, okay. um, but we'll, we'll keep moving. Oh, they have seven. Okay, okay. Yeah, they've got seven. Um, if you from down the bottom where you can see video, um, photo, square, and pano, you can actually slide that left and right with your finger. So perhaps you might need to slide it a little bit over to the to the left hand side, and that will bring it up. Um, that might be an option because normally it should definitely be there, especially if you're obviously using iOS 7, which okay. these people are. Yep. Yeah. Um, all right. So maybe if people are still having issues with that, we could maybe uh, have a chat after the webinar Absolutely. and we can maybe uh, drill deeper into that to see what's going yep. on. Yeah, okay. definitely. Let's move on. Good. Okay. The next one that we've got here is um, the ability to block callers. Now, you're probably all like me. Every now and again, you'll get a phone call and it might be um, an international phone call um, that you don't recognise and you think, oh, I just want them to stop ringing me. I'll show you how you can actually block callers now, which is Ooh, quite interesting. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. So I'm just bringing up the, um, the screen now. So hopefully you guys will see that in just a second. Let me know. And what should we be finding here, Nick? Yeah, sure. There should be a slide, if I can get it to work. Sorry, my apologies. Um, where it will actually show you once you've received a call and you go into your recent call area, um, it will actually show that up on the screen. So there's a screen at the moment that I've brought up, um, which is just showing you your recent call. So after you've missed the oh, call. That, that was on a second in. ago. And it's gone okay. back to the summary. No problem. I'll see if I can bring it back. Yeah, here we go. Is that Good. coming up? Yep. Yep. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. Now, what will happen um, when you're on a slide? If you just give me two seconds. So this one here, when you go into your recent calls, um, when you see the number that you want to block, there's a little information icon on the far right hand side, the little eye symbol. And if you press on that, it takes you into an area where you've got a variety of options in here. And at the very bottom, there is the option there to block this caller. So what you do is just simply tap on that and it will block that caller from being able to call you from here on in, which mm. yeah can be definitely handy if you always Very handy. I don't know about everyone else, but I get constantly interrupted um, with these telemarketers, you know, on my mobile. So this will be a great asset. And, and Nick, I'm thinking instead of going back to the summary, which is causing yeah. a little bit of a delay, can we maybe just keep moving through the slides? Uh, yes, I'll see how I go with that. Because unfortunately, yeah, I'm not sure that's possible. Over the that's okay. Yeah, okay. So, <laughs> if we that's can, right. I think it just, that's a good uh, idea though, because it is annoying, obviously. We're having a bit of trouble yeah. with the technology. Yeah, and you can just okay. verbally introduce it. Yeah, no problem. All right, now the next one um, that I was going to discuss is Siri. Um, which is the voice command uh, feature, which was introduced in the previous version. So it has been around for a little while. Um, but fortunately, Siri, Siri has gotten a lot of better. So I don't know if anyone's ever tried to get her to do anything um, by asking her a question. Um, sometimes it's always a bit of hit and miss because there's that language um, where she's trying to understand our accent, etc. cetera. Um, but there's lots of new capabilities with Siri now, which I find really good. Um, even things like she can return calls that you've just missed she can play voicemail back to you so if you've missed a message and it's gone through your voicemail you can ask Siri to play the voicemail message and you can even ask her to read your emails um, which I've actually tested and she does that very very well uh, so it's a great feature uh, if anyone's ever accessed Siri before I'm not sure you basically just press and hold your home button at the bottom of the screen and you'll tend to hear a little bit bit pop up 
Um, and you could then just give her the command of what you want to do. So if you want her to play voicemail messages, you can literally just say to her, play back voicemail. And she will do that. She'll go and retrieve them for you and play them back for you while you're perhaps driving in the car or, or whatever it happens to be. Um, and the same thing, read my emails. You just simply put in that command and she will read your emails back to you. Wow. So it is, yeah, it's a great feature. She could be there for some time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. Have you ever tried using Siri, Benedict? I have. I have with mixed success. Um, yes. When it works, it's very satisfying and I feel like a bit of a yay moment and when it doesn't, yes. it's just frustrating. <laughs> and I think what's important to mention here to uh, Nicole is that you've got a, a Siri command sheet of the, like, the top 20 commands that Siri readily understands and that's available yes. for everyone today. And just to yes, remind, sorry. at the end, just tick the, uh, the yes, I want that uh, in the exit survey and we'll send it to you. But I think what's important is that there's some commands that are pretty standard that she really understands and uh, it will be great to have those because then we can see what the possibilities are because I personally don't know what she can do until I yeah. play with it. So this is a exactly. great opportunity to get that done. Yeah, fabulous. All right, so the next thing that we're going to jump into is um, we're going to have a look at AirDrop, which is that feature that I mentioned earlier on, um, which is a great feature, but as I said, you do have to have iCloud set up to actually access this one. So I'm just going to move through um, a few screens here. Actually, so yes, um, Nick, what, one yeah. of those... If you wouldn't mind just going back to the Siri screens just to see what those oh, commands yeah, sure. are, Sorry. that would be really yep. great. And, no, and while you're on. doing that, if you can multitask, someone's asked the question, can you block a blocked call? Uh, my instinct would say no, if it's blocked, it's blocked, but am I wrong? Mm. Um, I'm not sure what they mean by that. Can you block? Oh, you know when you've got a blocked call and it says blocked, yes. so you don't know yes. the number, can you yep. block that? Ah, that's a very good question. Um, I've not actually tested that, truth be told, um, because normally I've only had a look at it with numbers that actually do show, yeah. show up. I'm assuming if it's coming up as blocked, you probably can't do it because yeah, it's obviously I think blocked so. before it hits our phone. But that's yeah. a great question. I'd have to have a look into that one. Okay. Thanks, yep. Kim. Uh, so let's just have a quick look at those Siri commands. Ah, yes. Okay, so can you still see the Siri screen? What can yes, I help can. you with? Yep, lovely. Yep. So I'm just going to move through. Now, what happens with Siri is um, if you're not actually sure what to ask her, when you go into Siri, so pressing and holding the home button for a couple of seconds, after a while, she'll actually prompt you and help you with these sort of screens. So she'll say to you, some things you can ask me, and she just comes up with a list of suggestions. So if you're thinking to yourself, I'm not really sure what I can ask her, um, you can just pause a moment and it will just tend to scroll through different options here um, and it might just help you with what you need to do. But as you said, Bernadette, I've got a little um, sheet that people can get access to at the end of the webinar, which will actually come up with some really useful commands that they can give to Siri just to get into common areas that are quite mm, useful. That's very powerful. Thanks, Nick. Yeah. Yep. All right. Now the next one is um, we're going to have a look at the AirDrop feature, which is again was the other new feature. Uh, now again, hopefully you can see on the screen the next slide. Uh, there's you a picture a dog. A photo there. Yep. Yes, that's actually my little puppy. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> um, but what I want to show you here with AirDrop, it's a great new feature that they've added, um, which basically just allows you to share um, things with other people. So you can share photos. Uh, you could share websites with other people, contacts, um, all sorts of different things. So rather than me having to get this photo and send it via a text message to someone I want to share it with or even emailing them, I can use AirDrop. Now what happens is when I'm using a photo obviously for this example, but when you're going into the item that you want to share, in the bottom left-hand corner you can see there's a little square there with an arrow pointing up. That's called your uh, share button. Okay, um, I might just jump yeah, in yeah. here. That's uh, okay. A few people, people are commenting, the they're not seeing the pic. Is there any reason yep. why that might not show up? No, it's showing on my screen, so I think we just uh, got it now. Beautiful. I've oh, got it now. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for your uh, feedback. Thanks for your comments, everybody. Okay, yeah, it's so really appreciated. Again, just to go through that, in the bottom left hand corner, there's a square with an arrow pointing up, and that's your share um, button. So when you actually click on that, what will happen is it brings up this panel. And it's got the option to message people or email people, etc. this photo. 
But just above that, you can see I've got some four images there of Angela, Bridget, Ken and Fritz. Um, and I can actually select any of those people there to share this photo with. Uh, and it just sends it via Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, whichever one you happen to have connected. Um, and it will then just share it that way. So rather than me texting it or emailing it, I can do it instantly with this option here called AirDrop. So Which, I'm assuming, Nick, that these people, yeah. Angela, Bridget mm -hmm. and Kenneth, have to be in your address book or contacts in order for them to show up clearly. Yeah, they do. Um, yeah. And they also, in order for AirDrop to work, just to go back over what we mentioned earlier on, you do need to have an iCloud account. Um, and then you'll be able to obviously access this feature. Um, and as long as they're near you, so they can't be a long way away, it won't work that way. Um, they do have to be near you um, and then they'll actually show up in the airdrop area. Okay, so one of the questions coming through is how will the other people receive the photo? In, in yeah. what context or folder? Fabulous. Excellent, and here's a slide I prepared earlier. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, you can see here, this is a snapshot of what the other person would see. So if someone wants to share something with you via AirDrop, you'll get this similar image popping up on your screen and it will just tell you the name of the person who wants to share the item with you and you have the ability to either accept that or decline. So you don't have to take on what they're sending you. You can actually say, no, nope, I don't want it and obviously decline. Okay. And can you show multiple photos at a time? Yes, you can. Um, so in the previous screen, I'll just go back one. Uh, can you see at the top um, with the image of the oh, yes. dog, there's yes. a little tick there. And if I want to yes. share others, I just simply tick those as well. So any of the other images I can see up there. And I can swipe left or right to see more, by the way. Um, okay. I, just simply, I just simply tick them. And then I can nominate, obviously, to airdrop them with those people. Fabulous. Great. Yeah. And do they show up as one image or do they scan through on the person's phone as, as text? That's a good question. So they'll so they'll get this screen popping up where they'll yeah. actually have multiple images showing okay. and they can yeah. then go and accept or decline them from there. Excellent. Great. Thanks yeah. for the question, Briar and Himal. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Jerry's asking how do you set up an iCloud account. We might save that to the end, Jerry, if that's okay. Yeah. That's a little bit more detail. Happy to stay on the phone afterwards and Nicole yeah, can definitely. help you out with that. Thanks, Jerry. Yep, absolutely. All right. Now, the next thing um, that's also another new feature with iOS 7 is the ability to view multiple web pages. Now, you did have that capability earlier on, um, but it looks slightly different. So I'm just bringing up that screen now. So hopefully you can see it. It's called apple.com at the top. And it's how do we get this screen, the... Nick? How, how okay. would we get this one up? <laughs> <laughs> this is the million dollar question today, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. All right. So let's see if I can get it for you guys. Can you see it now? We, we've got apple.com. We can see it. That's but it. I was just curious, Perfect. how do you get this? Oh, you just sorry. type in apple.com. This is just a web page. Right. Yeah, sorry. My apologies. This is going into Safari. Um, okay, so great. So just going to be surfing. And I've just happened to have got a screen dump here of apple.com. But it could be any web page. It really doesn't yep, matter. Yep, yep. Um, but more often, quite often when you're obviously surfing away in Safari and looking at different web pages, you, you tend to have more than one page open that you need to get to. Um, so what happens now, in the bottom right-hand corner, you can see those two little overlapping squares. Mm -hmm. And that actually takes you in to see any open page that you've got. So you can see I've got a bit of a screen dump here of three pages that I've been to in Safari. So without having to close one down, I can access each one. So if I wanted to go to the, the one at the very bottom, I just simply tap on it and that would bring that up as my main page that I'm looking at in Safari. So mm -hmm. it just simply has the ability to go and have a look. Now you could do that um, in the past, especially with the iOS 6 um, version earlier, um, but you were limited to eight. So you couldn't actually have any more than eight web pages open at once. Now, in iOS 7, you are unlimited. So you could literally have a whole little filing cabinet listed in there of different web pages that you can get back into. Mm, very nice. So that can be quite helpful, yeah, if you're like me and you've got more than one thing happening, um, different mm. web pages. It's just good that you don't have to close them down and have to retype the address in each and every time. Great. So that's quite a useful one. Yep. 
All right, now I'm going to bring up another screen now, which I'm um, hoping you will all see in a moment. Uh, it will title, be titled Keynote at the yep, top. we've got that, Nicole. Yep. Got that, lovely. Seems to be working good now. It's um, coming now, good. This screen, yeah, this screen is just from your app store. So I'm sure most of you have probably been into your app store before and searched for apps that you would like to purchase. Um, that's one of the main benefits of using the iPhone and iPad, obviously all the millions and millions of apps we have available. Now, sometimes when you go in there and you do a search on one, and I've just got the example here of Keynote, um, you might look at the price and you might think, no, I don't want to buy that right now or I want to wait and read a few more reviews, whatever it happens to be. What you can do with the icon I'm pointing to at the top here again, which is that square with the arrow pointing up, the share button, you actually have the ability to add it to your wish list which is kind of nice because um, after a while you forget which apps that you've been to or which ones you're interested in perhaps purchasing. So by adding it to your wish list, it just simply keeps a record of that and you can then go back and have a look at it later on and, and decide when you're ready to go and purchase them. So that's another new feature that they've added mm -hmm. in um, for the App Store. Obviously trying to promote that we buy. Yeah, it yeah, very self-interested, but <laughs> helpful all the same. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> all right. So, yeah, hopefully a few of you might use that. I'm not sure if that will be helpful, but it's yeah, it's a good idea, definitely, because I tend to forget which ones I've, um, I've gotten in there. All right. Now, there's only a couple of other things to show you with iOS 7 before we move on to some other features. Um, uh, and one is just one quick question. Yeah, sure. Uh, David's saying he doesn't have that button. Uh, is the there share button. Up the, the share top? button, David, is it? Um, he does. <laughs> oh, he does. It's okay. Excellent. Thanks, David. That's good. Let's That's why it's good to have your iPhone in front of you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. You so well done, David. That's really good. All right. Um, there's a feature, a couple, the two next features I want to show you with iOS 7 um, actually could drain your battery a little bit. So it's probably quite important that you perhaps look at these options and as I've done, I've actually turned them off. Now, I'm actually just coming back up the top of the screen, so I do apologise for jumping around a little bit here, uh, just so I can get to the screen that I need to show you. And the first one I want to show you is for um, background refreshing. All right, so hopefully you are seeing this screen. It's just a setting screen. Um, are you seeing that, Bernadette? Just the. Uh, we've only got the uh, the summary screen. The summary. Okay, no problem. Yeah. I'll force it to move forward again. Are you getting that now? Yes, we are. Yep, beautiful. Okay, one of the things that um, Apple have introduced with iOS 7 is this background refreshing option, which basically means that any app that you have running um, is refreshing its its content um, all the time. Now, obviously, because it's doing that, that can drain your battery substantially. Things like your location. So as you're moving around, it's always updating your current location. Um, even if you have Facebook as an example, so a social media site, even though you might not be looking at it, if it's still running in the background, it'll be constantly refreshing it and bringing up updates, etc. So one thing I would recommend just to save your battery life, which is always so important, is probably turning that off. Um, so what I've got here on the screen is just the settings screen. So I've just tapped on the settings icon and you then just go into general. Now from general, right at the bottom, you'll see there's an option there that says background app refresh. And when you tap on that, that will give you the ability to turn that off, which is definitely a good thing um, because, as I said, otherwise it is going to, to drain your battery um, substantially. So that's one thing that you might want to have a look at doing. It's a great idea and concept, um, but unfortunately it does drain the battery a little bit. All right. Now, another one that's also good to perhaps turn off is auto updates of uh, auto installation of um, updates to your apps. Now some of you may be aware you often get updates coming through with different apps that you have and usually it's your choice as to whether or not you want to update or not. Now in iOS 7 by default it actually turns on the ability to update them automatically. So in the background again it's constantly um, searching for updates and installing them um, when they're there and available to you. But again that's something that could drain your battery so it's possibly a good thing to, to turn off. So I'll just bring up that screen for you. 
So if you'll just bear with me for a second. Do you have many apps, um, Bernadette, just while I'm bringing that up? Oh, I mainly have about 3,000 of my son's games. <laughs> that's pretty much yeah. what my phone is filled with. <laughs> yeah. And that's about right too. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. There's always lots yeah. of um, games for the kids. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But in fact, All he's right. the one who's taught me a lot that I didn't know. So, you know, when in doubt, turn yeah. to a seven-year-old. Yes, absolutely, because they have no fear. They just get in there. And have you are so right. Fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right. Now, I've just, again, I've got up another settings screen here, um, and it's got at the top there iTunes and App Store. Are you seeing that, Bernadette? Just the, we are, yes. Lovely. Yep. All right. So I've just gone into settings, and you can see, obviously, iTunes and App Store. So if you tap on that, it then just takes you into this area here, and you can see just underneath where it says music, apps, and books, it's talking about updates. And it does have a little blurb underneath that saying automatically download new purchases, including free, made on other devices. So it's talking about just installing those updates automatically. And as I've done, as you can see on my screen, I've actually turned it off. So I've slid that little um, circle over to the left-hand side to turn it off because I don't want it to be updating my apps all the time. Um, because again I, I'm trying to preserve my battery I would rather control that when I'm ready mm, so good. that might also be another good thing just to have a look at good all right yeah so that's basically um, a summary of all the new features with iOS 7 um, and there's quite a, a few good ones in there I actually quite like the new version but it does take a little bit to get used to like anything um, but hopefully that will help quite a few of you who have upgraded and haven't seen those features or maybe have held off upgrading um, yeah just because you weren't sure about you know what the new ones are so yeah it'd be good to to see how you go with that good good or so what's that. next What's next indeed? We're now going to go through some um, nice little tips and tricks um, when working with the iPhone, just again, just to make your life a lot easier. Um, and the first one I've got here is going through organising your apps. So can you see that screen, Bernadette? Sorry to check with you. We've, no, we've got organising apps as the... Yeah, as beautiful. The, the, yeah. yeah, that's great. Okay, so as we've just been talking about, obviously there are a gazillion different apps that you can download to your iPhone and your iPad. And after a while, you just get so many that it's quite hard to, to find where they are. And all the ones that you've just installed always get put to the very end. But they might be the ones that you want to see on your first screen. So some of you may have seen this before. So I'm just bringing up a, a slide of a typical um, screen in uh, an iPhone. So hopefully you can all see that. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. One of the things that you can see just down the bottom of this sample screen um, is what they call the dock. Now, this snapshot is actually of my screen. And down the bottom in my dock, I've got phone, mail, safari, and music. The great thing about the dock area in an iPhone is that it stays there all the time. So it doesn't matter how many apps I've got. And as I'm sliding back and forth just by swiping from the right-hand side of the screen to the left, um, it will actually keep that area down there, which is really, really good. Um, so I'll show you how you can add ones in there in a moment. But just above the dock, can, hopefully you can all see there's a sequence of little dots there. And the very first one is a solid white colour. The others are sort of a faded grey, bluey colour. That just indicates how many screens I have of apps on my iPhone. So some of you will probably be like me and you'll have lots of dots down the bottom there. Um, some of you may only have a few. It just depends on how many apps you've got installed. So what you can actually do, if you want to go and see all your different apps, as some of you may know, as the icon just showed there, you can swipe from right to left and it will bring up the other screens. If you want to organise your apps, as in change them around, maybe put them into the dock, uh, etc., you actually need to go into edit mode. Now, the way that you actually go into edit mode on an iPhone is you press and hold on one of the apps. So it doesn't matter which one it is, you just put your finger on it and you press and hold for a couple of seconds and your apps will start to jiggle. Now, I can't demonstrate that on the with the screen dumps here, but you'll see something similar to what I've got. Um, they'll start to jiggle and you may notice some of them actually have crosses in the corner like the screen I have up here. Um, if any of you are seeing those crosses, that just simply means that that's apps that you've 
purchased and downloaded and you can actually delete those apps if you no longer want them on your iPhone or your iPad. The ones that don't have crosses are default installed with the iPhone software so you can't remove them. Um, so they obviously do have to stay there. But once you're in this jiggle mode, you again just move your, your finger onto whichever app you want to move and you just press and hold and you move it around. So if you want to move it up between a couple of other apps that are sitting there, you just slide your finger up to that position and the others will make way for that app to sit in there. Um, and it's the same for down the bottom in the dock area. If you want to move a map, an app down there because you want that um, available to you all the time, you just again simply press and hold and slide it down the bottom of the screen. But you can only have four in the dock on the iPhone. Um, so you have to obviously think about which ones are going to be the most important ones to you. Nick, I have a quick question. I heard yeah. a rumour <laughs> that when you're, all those um, apps are jiggling, if you yeah. press the control um, button, I'm not sure which button, it can delete them all. Is that true oh. or not? Well, I would first ask what's the control button because... Well, you know the little, uh, the, the little control button, the one... The major. Oh, the I, home I don't button. actually know. The home yes, button, that's yeah. That's okay, the home button down below. Um, yeah. That's a very good question. Not something I've tested, and I would probably say no to that because um, what I was going to say is normally once you've finished arranging your apps into the order that you're happy with, you then actually just press the home button once, so that big of circle course. button at yeah. the bottom, and that confirms all the changes. Um, oh, yeah. I don't know what so, button it was then, but if that's yeah. something you've not heard, then it's probably not true. Yeah, I've not heard about it. That would be quite dangerous, <laughs> I would think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. So, yeah, no, I've not heard about that. So, yeah, interesting to see if anyone else has. Yeah. And Sharon's yeah. asked a question, if you want to change an icon to another page, do you just hold on to the yeah. app and, and, and swipe it over? Great question. Yeah, so you just you press and hold with your finger and you keep sliding it to the right and it will then bring the next page into view. It sort of comes in quite quickly. Um, and then again, you can drag the app exactly where you want it to go. It is a little bit temperamental sometimes doing that. I try sort of try and aim for the bottom right hand um, edge that I find that's the best place to drag it to. So just above where I've got music there, so not in the dock area, but just down in that bottom right hand corner. If you aim for there when you go to slide onto the second page and the third page, etc., that just makes it a little bit easier. Okay, cool. Yeah. But it's a great idea to arrange them. Um, and in a second, I'm going to show you how to create folders as well, which, again, just makes your life a lot easier. Um, I've got an example of a folder um, on this current screen we're looking at called Utilities. It's in the second row at the top there, third one in. Um, and it's a great way just to organise your apps because, as I said, after a while, you're going to get lots and lots and lots, and you might just want to combine um, like apps or similar apps together. Um, I've got another one on my screen there called Banking. Um, so all my banking apps are in that particular little folder. So I'll go through how to create folders with you as well. All right. So I'm going to move on to the, the next slide, which, as I said, is the folders slide. And I'll just bring up some screens of that one also. So this is again accessed when you're in the jiggle mode. So once you've pressed and held on the uh, one of your apps for a couple of seconds and they start to jiggle. Um, so I'm looking at a screen now where I've got again different apps listed on here, YouTube, Pinterest, etc. Are you seeing that one, Bernadette? Just we are, yep, check. thank you. Lovely. All right. So what I'm going to show you here is how to create a folder and I'm going to use my Virgin Australia app down here where the pointing finger is and I'm going to combine it with my Passbook app up the top there which is a great little app. Um, it stores your boarding passes and things like that. I find it really useful. Now when you're in jiggle mode, so you're in edit mode, so you've pressed and held on your home button for a couple of seconds so they start to jiggle. On the app that you want to combine, you just again simply press and hold with your finger and you slide it up towards the other app that you want to combine it with. So you'll see it'll start to demonstrate that now on the overhead here. Once you get really close, you'll actually see a bit of a grey border around the outside and that basically shows you you're in the right spot. You're just about at the place where you can put it into this particular folder. And then it will bring up a similar screen to what I've got now. It actually shows, so obviously everything in the background goes faded and it just shows you the two apps at this stage that you're combining together. So I've got my passbook there and I've got Virgin Australia listed next to it. 
Um, and you can just repeat that over and over for however many apps that you want to do, which is really helpful. Um, in the past, uh, you were limited to only having 12 apps, but now in iOS 7, there's no limit. So if I had a lot of different travel apps that I wanted to put in here, I can just keep adding them. Uh, and I'm not sure if you can see, actually, at the bottom of this folder area, there's, again, those little dot icons. Yeah. And that's indicating that I would have more apps on several pages. So a bit like the concept we saw before on the home screen. Um, the other really good thing with folders is you can rename it. So if you don't want to call it travel, because uh, it will always suggest a name to you, you can actually uh, tap up the top there and you can manually edit that and change it to whatever description you like. Um, I've got one for all my kids' games and I've called it kids' games. So it just makes sense so that you can obviously find out where they all are um, and access them really easily in future. All right. So that's the next thing. Yeah, really handy feature to use with um, with folders. And you can do that, by the way, for those people who are on iOS 6. It's exactly the same um, way of creating them. I'm just bringing up a screen now of what it looks like for you. Um, so this is a sample one here. I've just it's dummied up the name of entertainment. But again, you could call that whatever you like. It just looks a little bit different. And as I said, um, you are limited to only having 12 apps in there. All right, but you still have that capability even if you're not on iOS 7. Sorry, Benedict. Nick, uh, I'm just uh, keeping a check on the time. We've got about yes. nine minutes left. And, yeah. uh, so are we still on track or is there anything that you really want to focus on? No, we're still on track. Thank Thanks you for sure. asking. Oh, Good. yeah, I'm going to move on to the next one now. So um, the next one I want to show you is multitasking, um, which is a great feature um, because we have so many apps. Um, of basically managing all of the apps that you have open. So some people don't realize that when you're working with the iPhone and you go into an app and then you come out of it by pressing the home button, that app is actually still running in the background. Um, and after a while, obviously, you get a build-up of a lot of different apps running. So what you can do is you can easily get into those apps that are already open. That's one thing you can use with multitasking. Um, the other one is you can clear those apps that are running out of the memory, again, just to help you save your battery life and things like that. So the way that you get into multitasking is um, it doesn't matter if you're on iOS 7 or if you're on iOS 6, you press your home button twice. Now. If you're in iOS 7, you'll actually see the screen I have um, on the overhead here now where you actually see a bit of a, a snapshot of each of the apps that you have open. So um, it actually shows you a bit of a panel there of what the app was um, and you can see them in a lot, lot larger screen, whereas in the previous version they came up a little bit differently, which I've got a screen for that in a moment. Um, now, what you do here is when you want to go on, if I wanted to go to my phone, for example, which you can see here, if I wanted to bring that back up, I could just simply tap on that and that would bring that back to the foreground. But more importantly, if you want to remove something out of your um, memory, what you can do is once you see it in here, Again, you just slide and swipe up off the screen. Now, this is the new feature with iOS 7. So I'll demonstrate that now. So if I wanted to get rid of this app store where the pointing finger is, if you can see, I'm just sliding my finger up and off the screen, and that actually then removes that from the memory. Um, so that helps to save my battery, as I mentioned before. If I just show you for the iOS 6 and prior um, version, this is what your task switcher screen will look like. So it does look a little bit different, obviously. And you just send, tend to see the icons of the apps that you have open. And if you press and hold on one of them, again, you'll get that jiggle mode, like what we've been talking about, but you'll see a red circle in the corner. And if I decide that I want to remove my music um, from the memory, I would just press on that red circle and that will delete it out of the memory. It doesn't delete the app, it's just deleting it from the memory. All right, so it's a good thing to do because as I said, obviously after a while, you get lots and lots of um, apps open. Mm. Nick, there's a lot of questions coming through that are quite specific. Yes. What I thought I might um, do is, is maybe hold you on the line for 10 minutes after. Uh, yeah. midday so anyone who's interested can stick around and if not um, people can go but I just want to make sure you get through what you've planned for today so thanks for your questions everyone please stay around on the line if you want detailed information yep absolutely all right now um, the last one that I will go through with you at this stage is doing a search 
Um, again, some of you may have done a search in your iPhone before, but using what we've been talking about, we get lots of apps um, installed on our screen. Um, and it does get a little bit frustrating trying to remember where are they all, even if they're tucked away in folders, you want to be able to quickly access them um, so that you can get into them, do what you need to do and then get on with your, your daily business. Um, so to access the Spotlight search, if you're in iOS 7, I'll demonstrate that one first of all. Um, so I've got a screen up here, again just a typical screen on your iPhone um, and there's a little pointing finger at the top there just pointing down. Now what you can do from any screen on your iPhone or your iPad in iOS 7 is you just simply swipe down. Um, so I'll demonstrate that here, just swiping it down and it brings up a little search area at the very top. And you simply just type in what it is that you're searching for. Now the really good thing is you can search for lots of different things. It's not just apps, it could be a contact, uh, it could be um, music, a song that you want to go back and play, all sorts of different things. You just simply start to type in what it is that you're obviously looking for. So in this next screen that I've got here, I've just typed in MUS and it's just quickly brought up a snapshot of any contact that has that description in it and also underneath that any apps, etc. So it's a really useful way of finding things, as I said, so you don't have to keep swiping back and forth and looking in folders for those apps that you want to get to. If you're on um, iOS 6, um, you it, access it slightly differently. You have to be on the very first page of all of your apps. Um, so you're what they call your home screen. So the very first white dot and you actually then swipe from left to right and it will bring up this screen that I've got here on the, the overhead. Uh, again, you simply type in what you're searching for and again, it will come up with a list of options um, that will match what you've typed in. So you can still do a search from the previous version, that's no problem, um, just obviously a little bit different. You have to be um, on the home screen in order to access it. All right. So have you ever done a search before, Bernadette? I have, yes. I find it very yeah. useful. Yeah. yeah, it is good. Yeah, and sometimes you tend to forget because you're so used to just swiping back and forth trying to find Yeah, something. that's right. Um, yeah. But it's a good technique just to use, yeah, obviously just to help you a little bit. Yeah. All right. Well, that pretty much brings us to the end of um, of what we we're going to go through. Um, okay. So amazingly, we've gotten there very quickly. Time we flies have. when and you're having uh, fun. That's right. And there's been um, a lot of questions coming through. So I, I would love to have you stay around on the line if you can yeah, uh, and ask, ask these, these questions. Um, and just before we go to the poll, I just want to let everyone know that if you liked what you heard today and you think that what Nicole was able to add was valuable to you, then um, firstly, there's the Siri command sheet and there's another ebook about iOS 7, which really contains a lot more about what we've talked today that she's really happy to give out. So just remember to tick that box in the survey. And also to let you know that Nicole and I were putting on a three session webinar in early February and they're one and a half hours each. And the three uh, webinars will be touching on um, the things that you really need to know in, ad in addition to what you've covered today. So just, uh, Nicole, can you just touch on the three topics that we'll be covering in those, those webinars, yeah. those one, one and a half hours? Yeah, sure. Um, the first one that we're going to go through in session one is just looking at um, typing and editing because often you're, um, you're transferring data from an email to another email and things like that and just doing that much more effectively. Things like cut and paste, copy and paste, etc. Uh, so that was session one. Session two, we're going to get into working with your mail um, and more importantly, staying organised with your mail so that you can keep on top of um, all your emails coming in, particularly if you have multiple email accounts because sometimes that can get a little bit out of control. Uh, and the last session we were going to have a look at was using the calendar, um, so creating invitations, meetings to invite other people and just again generally staying on top of your calendar bookings and also we we're going to talk about managing ebooks because sometimes you'll get PDFs or documents sent to you um, in emails and also how to manage those the best that you can. Thanks, uh, Nicole. That's going to be a fantastic series. It's going to be one and a half hours per session and a lot of the half hour at the end will be about your Q&A. So like today, you've got specific questions that you'd love answers. So we're going to have the open forum at the end and indeed throughout. But I just want to let you know, if you like what you saw and you thought that Nicole was a great trainer, which I personally think she's amazing, very detailed and very specific, um, please join us in seven. We'll be sending you an email if you like uh, with more details about that. So um, let's jump onto the poll and, uh, and, and finish off.
Okay, so the um, the last poll that we were interested in seeing is um, getting people just to give us a bit of feedback on what you found would be the most beneficial of all the topics that we covered today. So the things that you definitely think that you'll start to, to use or play around with a little bit more. So we're starting to get some feedback now and the great thing is that, that um, what's new in iOS 7 was obviously a really mm. popular topic, which I thought it would be because there's some mm. so many new features in there which are really helpful. And also Spotlight Search, which is, again, a really good one. Um, that's coming in at, at 40% of interest and increasing as I'm looking at it on the screen. So that's fabulous. Mm -hmm. And it's good that there's, yeah, everything is actually coming up as a point of interest, which is really good. Because um, you just right. want to make sure that you're, you're using it the best that you can. We all know how to make a phone call and those basic ones, but there's so much more to it like anything else. Well, I think what we forget, Nicole, is it's really a computer. I certainly forget that it's a computer and I think it's just a phone. And uh, we've just scratched the, the tip of the iceberg, I would suggest, today as to what's possible. And if you yeah. don't like the manuals like I don't and you really want to <laughs> tap into <laughs> Nicole's brain, please join us at the, uh, the webinars. But I'd just like to take this, this time to say thank you to Nicole for your wonderful presentation. I, I found it really valuable. It's given me a lot more confidence using the phone. I'd like to thank Sarah and all the guys yeah. at Redback who have delivered yet another wonderful webinar to us and we just appreciate your amazing technology and service so thank you and thank you to you all for joining and for your wonderful feedback and contributions and everybody's helping each other so uh, it's been a lovely um, hour and thank you for, for spending it with us uh, we'll, we'll sign off now and if anybody would like to stay on the line uh, Nicole's going to stay on the line and she's going to help you out with some of your detailed questions so anything for you to say Sarah no, not at all. I'd just like to thank the two of you for a very inspiring and information, um, informative webinar. It's been great um, hearing all the tips and tricks from the experts. Um, and just a quick note to everybody when we close down the webinar to actually um, complete the exit survey. And once that's completed, we'll actually send you a follow-up email with the recording. And Bernadette will also send you the guides that we spoke about earlier today. Great. And Fabulous. Nicole, is there anything you'd like to finish off with? No, I'd just like to say thank you to you both and, uh, and thank you to everybody for joining in and, and listening because obviously there's so many great things to know and I could have waffled on for much longer than an hour but <laughs> hopefully that's a good starting point for everybody. So thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. Oh, that's great. To everyone asking, yes, you will get the information. Just tick the box so that gives us permission to send to you. Okay, yes. so please do that's take it. that survey uh, and tick it and we'll be able to get to all the information. So on that note, I'll say goodbye to everybody. And Nick, I'll leave you to stay on with a few people who might yeah. have some detailed questions. No, all the best, everybody. Fine. Thank you. Bye-bye. Um, so if anyone does have any questions, just feel free to type them into the messages box um, mm -hmm. and we'll stay on for the next few moments and answer them. So Sarah, do I need to, can they hear me speaking or do I need to respond by typing as well? Everyone can still hear you. Oh, lovely. I better behave myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the old joke, um, you know, presidents and prime ministers and they say, whenever there's a microphone on, you just have to assume it's on. Yeah. <laughs> Now, Sharon's asked a question there saying um, she missed the control centre. Can you tell me where to find it? So, Sharon, if you're still on the line, um, you basically swipe up from the bottom of your screen up towards the top. And it's only available from iOS 7. So if you're in the previous version, you, you won't be able to access that. Ah, lovely. Good. Thank you. <laughs> Sharon got that. That's good. 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 There's still a few people left on the line. Um, yeah. Maybe talk about iCloud, um, Nicole. How do people get onto iCloud or Cloud Share? Yeah. Um, you basically, you've got to go and set up an account for it. Um, so that's the first thing. You can actually go online. So just you can do it from Safari on your iPhone if you want to, or you can do it um, obviously from any computer. It doesn't matter. Um, but you can just go to iCloud.com. And you can then go in there and, and actually set up an account. Uh, it's a good idea, actually. I've, I've obviously got one. Um, and there's lots of different options um, that are available with it. So I know with my iCloud account, it means that everything is synchronized. So 
Um, I can have my calendar, any appointment that I put into my calendar is automatically uploaded to my iPad, to my iPhone, onto my PC and Mac. It's all synchronised, which is great. I don't have to go back and, and you know, retype in appointments, etc. cetera. Um, so that's the best thing. Um, Generally, when you go and install an update um, to iOS, whichever version it is, it tends to ask you, do you have an iCloud account? And from memory, it does have an option to go and create one. Um, so you could also do it from there. Okay. I'm yep. just seeing if there's any other questions that came through. Yeah, sure. Um, oh, it's okay, yeah. Just asking about the survey. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I think no one seems to be typing right now. Mhm. Mm yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. Well, All good. It's, uh, people know to get in touch with me if they have anything. Um, uh, my email is there, everybody. So if you have any follow-up questions, and Nicole, what's your email address? Would you like me to put that into the? Um, yeah, sure, the that would be great. Room? Yep. So read it at me. I can give it to you now. So it's Nicole yeah. N I C O L E mm -hmm. at M S Planet. So M for Mary S for Sam Planet dot com dot au. Okay, great. That's gone. If everybody, uh, anybody wants to ask Nicole a direct question or specific question, they can email her direct, <laughs> and. Um, I'm sure you better help them out. Yes, okay. no problem. Good. Excellent. Um, no worries. Okay, well, um, Anne's there with the, what's the benefit of an iCloud account? And, and Brian's saying, I have a problem with storage, any hints? Or are they something you'd rather take offline, Nicole? Yeah, look, uh, and just as I was saying before, with the benefits of an iCloud account, it just keeps everything synchronised. Um, so as I was saying, you could have emails on your iPhone and that will transfer over to an iPad automatically and also to your PC or Mac. Um, so that's the main benefit. And also you get those other add-ons like the AirDrop that I was talking about before, et cetera. Um, yeah, probably in regards to problem with storage, um, yeah, it's. I guess you've just got to keep on top of uh, how many things you have um, installed on your iPhone, depending on how much memory you've got, et cetera. Um, so, yeah, it's probably something I could probably answer more offline, I guess, with that one. Cool. Okay. And I think the same with Briar's storage, any hints, it might be something you might want to take yeah. offline. It could be a little bit more yeah. detailed. All right, it seems um, <clears throat> the survey page is being uh, redirected. Hopefully that will yep. work. Well, on that note... Um, Thank you, Nicole. Thank you to everybody no still on the line. And have a lovely day. And hopefully we'll see you on the next webinar. Okay. Bye-bye. Yeah, Thanks. Bye. -bye. Bye.